the, so the next question then is, okay, and, and I get this question a lot is, well, what can I do? How to yeah. spot it? You know, right. what do we do? How do we do this? Right. So like, this is what we do. I mean, sometimes we do these stories called verifies or if you're just yeah. doing, um, <laughs> a, you know, if you just have a question, you want an answer. You have to go through these journalistic sort of strategies to find if something's true or not. And there's some easy stuff you can do at home, right? Like the first thing I do, if I, if I see a, a viral post on Twitter, and I don't know if it's true or not, like the first thing I do is just examine it. Okay, where did it come from? Does it look likely? Does it not look likely? Does it look Photoshopped? Zoom in on it. Yeah. Um, maybe like a, you know, a photo or a picture or something like that. Um, you want to beware of headlines because no reputable journalistic source is going to start painting headlines that immediately drive you to emotion or say outrageous things, right? They don't make conclusions in headlines, right? They more point to events, narrative, what happened. So beware of headlines. Oftentimes with misinformation from like sources you've never heard of, but they look like legitimate articles, the headline will say something completely different than the actual article. Mm -hmm. And that's on purpose. So you got to be careful. Read the stuff. I can't tell you how many times like, We'll do a, a special report, right, on masks, for instance. We did a long-form report on the science of masks like, during this COVID-19 era, era. And there's people who say horrible things in the comments that are literally answered in the story if they would have read it or watched it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, good point, but just read it, you know, to yeah. do your diligence. Um, another thing Again, are there, are there any quotes from actual people? Are there links in the story that work? And do they take you to the right things or do they take you somewhere else? Um, you could Google the reporter. You can Google the, the network or the affiliate that it comes from. Does it seem legitimate? Those are just simple things that you can Google in five seconds. Yeah. Um, but there's other tools that I like, and we, we talked about this earlier. I like using a reverse image search on Google you can just go over to the like photo icon in the top right of Google and you can copy and or save an image online, like the image in question, and you can paste it in the bar. So instead of like typing your search, you're almost like inputting the picture itself. And then Google will spit out like all the other hits it has for that same image. And a lot of times you'll get Snopes or you'll get another website that, um, examines these things to see if they're true or not or you'll see like i don't know where the original photo came from and you can learn a lot from that yeah. just scouring the internet and then uh one other tool people don't know about nobody knew about it here either except for a couple of reporters but this is the simplest thing on the keyboard that you can use and it's just pressing control f whenever you have a document the guy literally uses for the Mueller report as soon as the Mueller report came out the redacted version um it was super long right and so I just start pressing control F, a little search bar comes up. Excuse me. And you can search for any phrase or, or word that you want. It'll scour the entire, you know, 150 page document for that phrase or that word, right? So like when President Trump says that the Mueller report was a complete and total exoneration, well, you could control F and just type in exoneration. And like that word only comes up twice in the Mueller report on all of its pages. And what it says distinctly is this is not an exoneration. So yeah. like, I mean, literally, if you want to believe them or not, it's up to you. But it's, the information is usually there at first source value. And I just always like to read it for myself before I hear it from anybody else. Yeah. But it does take a little work. Yeah, but it's, to me, it's like advanced citizenship. I mean, and, and you've, because we live in this country, it's a great country, but you also have to do your work. Um, that's what this country asks of you. And no more has it ever been easier, really, to do that work. As Scott Libin, the great Scott Libin, the news director in your, your piece said, yeah. yes, we've always had these faux fake stories, but never have we had the ability to disprove them so quickly and so easily. That's right. Yeah, and it can work for it can work in bad ways too. You have doxing, <laughs> you have doxing now, and you have, you know, the uh, folks that just want to ruin people who they feel like uh, are in the wrong. It's wild times, Jay. Wild times. 
I'll, I'll say one more thing. I'll say one yeah, more please. thing. And you know, you gotta be aware. Like some people say, it's a terrible time for journalism, but I think, I think it's a golden era right now. Because honestly, I sit here and as I write stories and read stories, I'm not sit, there's no like, there's no Godfather sitting here like playing a puppet of trying to get liberal or conservative yeah. messages out. We're covering the news. We work really hard, as you know, to get both sides or three or four sides of every story as we can. We have ethics and standards. And I just hope that the public um, can, can grow to appreciate that and maybe use it even more in times of uh, all this misinformation, disinformation. I mean, you can watch the same story on MSNBC and on Fox News. Just watch it and watch how they cover it. Mm -hmm. And they're both misinformation, right? You're, you're, you're purposefully omitting important facts to just cover your bases and, and prove your viewpoint. And um, I don't know. It's a good time to be a good listener. Hmm. Yeah. You, you said it. 20, I, mean, I don't know. 24 hour news. Don't get me started on that, but that might be one of the worst things that's ever happened in, to journalism. <laughs> the last question I have for you, and it's a curveball, but I'm curious, just resources. You know, for me, you mentioned Snopes earlier, Snopes.com. I look at factcheck.org. Mm -hmm. Neiman Lab is a good one. Um, Pointer Institute. What are some of the things that you look at? It's like, hmm, this seems off to me. Wonder if someone else has noticed this and what are they saying about it? Yeah, well, oftentimes I'll Google uh, the topic and, you know, the news articles, uh, uh, that come close to it pop up and I'll see who's covering it and how they're covering it, right? Mm -hmm. So I can look at different organizations across sort of the political spectrum and see how they're covering something. Uh, that's when I do it. I'm also a big fan of Vox and Vox has been sort of pinned as maybe it leans a little bit liberal. Vox is in V-O-X. V yeah, V-O-X. However, they have the most links. I mean, they break things down very, very finely and deep with detail. And there are links everywhere. So I can, I feel like I can source everything. And they yeah. deep dive into a, a deep dive into a story, which I really appreciate. But yeah, Snopes and fact check are fantastic. Uh, they're usually ahead of the game and they have sourcing everywhere. I mean, that's the real key thing, right? Yeah. When you go out and you get information, you need to source it. Who said it? You know, you need to prove what you're, what you're saying. Yeah. The name of the game in journalism. So, um, yeah, exclusives are hard. You know, when people have exclusive stories that you really can't fact check, that's that's tough. Anonymous sourcing is brutal. Sometimes it's necessary. You know, when people fear uh, their jobs or their lives. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, we try to never cover people's faces up. We try not to not use their names um, for that very reason. We want people to be able to believe what we're, what we're reporting. Yeah, this is a whole nother topic that I would love to get into is just the editorial process of that we go through, or I don't anymore, but that you do, yeah. and we all did. I think a lot of people would be surprised with the amount of steps that we take to make sure that what we do is accurate and it's fair. Doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. We do. Right. There's no question. But there are certain principles that we go through and, and things. I was just going to say that, we're, like, you know this, you're trained to be objective, right? Like, you can have your own thoughts on politics, whatever, but when you're on the job, you are trained to think objectively. It's your job to tell a full and complete story. When I go home sometimes and my wife, we get into an argument and my wife brings up a really good point, I, like, immediately go, oh, that's a great point, I'm sorry. And she goes, no, you're mocking me. And I go, no, no, I just immediately think you have a really good point. I want to apologize. <laughs> That's me in trouble. <laughs> you would think that would not get you in trouble, but nah, um, she doesn't think it's serious. Here, here's the last thing I would say on this, and yeah. and I'll leave you with the last word. But I think if we had to distill this thing, if we had, if 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 someone who's watching this gets one thing out of this, to me, it's like have a heavy dose of skepticism on everything you read, watch listen to us right now be skeptical of what we are saying that doesn't mean you say well, i don't believe it i'm done that means you have to then take the next step to say hmm 
I wonder what other people are saying about this. I wonder, it's being curious and using your critical thinking skills. Yeah, if you, I'll just, you're absolutely right. If you think, if you think President Trump and all Republicans are out of their minds, you're not listening because half the country voted that way. Mm -hmm. If you think liberal people and Biden are all in the middle of the street protesting for terrible reasons, you're not listening because a lot of the country is moving that way. People have different perspectives in life. Um, and it's important to listen and be curious about those perspectives. Um, I, I just feel like that needs to be said about how we digest news. Mm -hmm. Like we instantly want to think that it's right or wrong, that we agree or don't agree, that we Twitterize everything and these compact things. But I'm sorry to tell everybody the world is gray. It always will be. It's always somewhere in the middle, you know? Yeah. Um, so, Yes, be skeptical. Be skeptical. But don't be so dubious that you don't trust outlets that work really hard to feed you uh, information. Yeah, even, even the stuff, and more so the stuff that you may actually agree with, the stuff that reflects.